Tonight on Connecticut's news station, Tent City Crackdown. One Connecticut city breaking up a settlement of people struggling to find homes. So long to the storm that brought us heavy rain and snow and now gusty winds. When do they diminish your forecast coming up? Plus, gunmaker Sue, the son of a mass shooting victim at a Colorado supermarket, goes after one Connecticut company. Also, major Honda recall, big problems reported for the seatbelts in half a million vehicles. And a big jet landing. I want to play and I would like to play in New York. Gang Green is close to the move of the NFL offseason as Aaron Rodgers says he wants to join the Jets. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. We start things off with breaking news in New Haven tonight. A large police presence in the Elm City. Good evening. I'm Ben Goldman and I'm Jen Bernstein. The investigation is happening right now on Dixwell Avenue. Fox 61's Gabby Molina just arrived on the scene. She is live there for us right now. Gabby, tell us what you know. Well, Ben and Jen, it is a very active scene here on Dixwell Avenue. I'll step out of the way so you can get a look at what we're talking about. A large portion of the road is blocked off at this point. Invest Investigators on the scene. We're still working to get some details about exactly what happened here, but I was just able to speak to someone here on the scene. You see that black car in the distance. Investigator it has its hazards on. Investigators are standing by that car. The driver of that car told me that he was driving along Dixwell Avenue tonight when he saw a man lying in the street, appeared to have suffered a gunshot wound, and when he was driving by, he happened to see him lying in the road, stopped to try to help the man, and at that point, he tells us that the ambulance came and investigators closed this area off. Now, again, we are still working to confirm some of those details with police and with the city here, but a very, very active scene tonight. I also want to bring your attention to to the left here, First Calvary Baptist or First Calvary Church here in New Haven. We've been to that church specifically to talk about meetings, uh, for meetings specifically talking about violence in this area of the city. And this shooting happened right in front of their residents in this specific neighborhood have been very concerned about crime and violence. Uh, again, still working to figure out some of the details as to what happened here, but it appears to be a very active investigation at this point. We're going to continue to follow this very closely, and as soon as we learn more details about what happened here, we'll pass those along to you. For now, live in New Haven, Gabby Molina, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Gabby, keep us updated. Well, we survived the Nor'easter. Some places still cleaning up, and it's chilly out there, but we've got brighter days ahead. Yeah, the first day is spring, not too far off. Nice to say that after the last couple days here in Connecticut. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now. Hi, Rachel. Yeah, the wind's actually stronger today than it was at any point during the last storm. We've got gusts up to about 30 miles per hour in Meriden, 20 in Hartford. I can safely say, though, the worst of the winds are over at this point. Today we had gusts up around 45 miles per hour at times, but the wind is diminishing and will continue to do so as we head through the day tomorrow. As the wind comes down, the the temperatures will actually come up in the next couple of days. But in the meantime, that wind adding a bit of an extra bite to the air. So the temperature in Hartford's 37, but the wind chill is 29. The wind chills 19 in Torrington and 29 right now in Groton. Here's a look at the last storm. It is pulling away, but you can still see that spiral here as it spins off. Low temperatures tonight dropping back into the 20s. Heading through the day tomorrow, we'll start the day off with temperatures right around the 30 degree mark and even in the upper 20s for some spots. Otherwise, we're looking at partly cloudy skies, temperatures in the mid 40s at lunchtime, and high temperatures up around 50 degrees as we head through the afternoon, so milder, and it'll be even warmer for St. Patrick's Day on Friday. We'll take a look at the numbers and time out the chance for a shower coming up. Okay, thank you, Rachel. Well, new at 10, housing concerns in New Haven. People living in an Elm City Park deemed 10 city are staying there tonight. All of this comes after the city gave them an eviction deadline today. Earlier tonight, Fox 61's Gabby Molina filed this report about the needs of the people struggling to find homes. And now what's next for them? The so-called tent city in New Haven is still standing. Several people call the area behind West River Memorial Park home. They have belongings here. Most of these people have jobs. Um, you know, they're trying to rebuild their lives from whatever catastrophe brought them here in the first place. The row of tents and tarps has been there for years, and the city says it's always kept an eye on it. 
But recently, a number of problems have prompted officials to give orders to pack it up. They've uh, built a, a shower uh, with water that uh, drains right into the river there. Uh, they have built, they started to build another uh, permanent structure. There's human waste on site. There's a lot of trash. Some people did leave by Wednesday's 1 p.m. deadline. A few brought their things to the Amistad Catholic Worker, which has what it calls a human rights zone, where people can set up their tents in the backyard. So what we're doing now in the backyard is sort of combining this, this resistance to the criminalization of homelessness with actual, you know, hands-on hospitality with, with people who really need it. But many people decided to stay put, with several supporters choosing to join them overnight despite the looming eviction. To add to the numbers and, and just stand with them, um, so at least be witness to it, even if we all get dragged off. The park closed at sunset, and New Haven police responded to clear the parking lot, but not the encampment, creating questions about when action will be taken. Community outreach workers from the city were on site offering resources. We want to support them as much as we possibly can. Every person at this site has a bed that they can go to at Columbus House. But advocates say their concern is that it's a temporary solution to a long-term problem. And that's been our question, then what? Because the then what usually is people are just wandering. Again, that was our Gabby Molina reporting. While this issue of housing is going on in the Elm City of New Haven tonight, the city is getting more than half a million dollars for more affordable options. Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro spoke about the money to support neighborhood housing services in New Haven and Neighbor Works New Horizons so they can provide more housing options. The funding that we celebrate today continues to support their efforts. It helps to preserve, to expand affordable housing, and while also revitalizing and sustaining our neighborhoods and creating jobs. According to the state census, about 34 percent of Connecticut residents need more than a third of their income to pay for housing. And new at 10, a former Fairfield Town official accused of animal abuse charges appeared in court today. Raymond Newberger was arrested last week after officers say he sent threatening texts to police. He's charged with second degree threatening and harassment. Newberger is also facing charges after investigators say he abused a cat, including pouring bleach on it. New attempt tonight concerning moments for several schools in New London after a nearby shooting this morning. New London police say the shooting happened in the area of Hempstead and Franklin Streets just after 11. That's near Benny Dover Jackson Middle School, Jennings Elementary School, and the Regional Multicultural Magnet School, and the Interdistrict School for Arts and Communications. The schools were not on lockdown, but students and staff went into a secure building for almost an hour. Officers are investigating the shooting still tonight, and anyone with information about it should call New, ha New London Police. And new at 10, a state police trooper in Bethany is under arrest, accused of letting his girlfriend use a department reporting system that contains sensitive information. After an internal investigation, trooper Mitchell Paz is charged with computer crimes and conspiracy to commit computer crimes. State police say Paz and Amanda Marino of Terryville accessed software to look into an investigation about a man Marino has a child with who had been arrested in an ongoing drug case. That man, Sean Roca, and Marino were both arrested in February on similar charges. Trooper Paz has been suspended with pay following his arrest. New attempt tonight, police in Wolcott are looking for whoever stole a vehicle on Todd Road. This is video of the car being driven away. The surveillance video says it happened just before 7 o'clock this morning. Here's a closer look at that video and at that vehicle. Officers say the suspect was a passenger inside of the car Anyone with information, call Wolcott Police. Aquarian Water Company customers won't see any rate increases. Instead, they'll actually see costs go down starting today. State regulators voted to reduce rates for more than 200,000 customers. They rejected Aquarian's proposal for a rate increase over the next several years. The decision will save customers about $67 per year. The regulators also approved a new three-tier pricing structure for single-family customers. So if you use less water, you'll pay even less. Moving on tonight, educators are asking state lawmakers to pass new measures to try and improve schools and end Connecticut's teacher shortage. The state's teachers union spoke in Hartford today, pushing for money in the budget to be directed towards hiring and retaining teachers. Two proposed bills would implement a statewide minimum salary for teachers here in Connecticut and also provide pandemic pension benefits. 
The proposals would also include other reforms, including raising the starting age for kindergarten from four years old to five years old and creating an educator bill of rights. Now we have to get it across the goal line, past and secure the future of our educators, our schools, and the future of our children. We've been so eager to support our teachers because we know supporting them is the most important thing we can do to support our children. More than 600 teachers submitted written comments to the General Assembly's Education Committee, which is expected to vote on the bills in the next few weeks. Well, tonight, Connecticut is honoring the state's first female mayor after she died at the age of 100. Ann Ucello was elected mayor of Hartford back in 1967. She's being remembered around the city, including at Makerspace CT. That's a nonprofit founded and run by women, which helps entrepreneurs bring their ideas to life. It also offers programming to get girls involved in coding. Shoppers and leaders all around the city uh, Ucello once led were quick to praise her as a trailblazer. It's hard to be something if you can't see an example before. And, you know, she's a part of Hartford's history of strong female leadership. So we're really grateful for everything she did to make this city great. She would absolutely have loved it, but she'd be pushing to move us forward even more because we still have not uh, achieved full equality. Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisowitz was in Hartford visiting female-run businesses this morning. She says she had recently hosted a 100th birthday party for Ucello and was hoping to do it again for her this year.